How far can we push the boundaries of genetic modification with CRISPR-Cas9? And what are the barriers that stand in our way? Welcome to the world of genetic editing, where CRISPR-Cas9 is our most promising tool. This revolutionary technology has the potential to change lives, offering hope for effective treatments right at our bedside. But the road to this future is not without challenges. The first hurdle is delivery. How do we safely transport this gene editing tool to the correct cells, especially when the treatment needs to be delivered in vivo? The issue of size is critical, as our current favorite option may be too small to efficiently carry the Cas9 gene. Then there's the question of accuracy. We need to limit the off-target activity to prevent unintentional edits that could lead to profound complications like malignancy. Finally, we cannot ignore the ethical conundrum that is editing genes in embryos. The long-term consequences are unclear and the boundaries are yet to be fully determined. Let's delve deeper into these limitations and understand them better. First, let's explore the challenge of delivering gene editing to the right cells. In the world of gene editing, one of the key hurdles is how to deliver the Cas9 nucleus encoding genes and guide RNAs in vivo, that is, within a living organism. It's a bit like trying to deliver a letter to a specific mailbox in a bustling city without a proper address. You might be able to get the letter to the city, but how do you ensure it reaches the right mailbox? To effectively deliver these crucial elements without causing any toxicity, we need a suitable vehicle or vector. Adeno-associated virus, or AAV, has traditionally been the go-to option for gene delivery. It's kind of like our standard mail carrier, but there's a hitch. This delivery system might be too small to efficiently carry the Cas9 gene. It's like trying to fit a large package into a small mailbox. One solution could be to use a smaller Cas9 gene, but this comes with its own implications on efficacy. It's akin to trying to fit your letter into a smaller envelope. Yes, it might now fit into the mailbox, but does it still contain all the necessary information? This necessitates the exploration of other non-viral delivery systems. Researchers are investigating myriad alternatives, but this process requires further optimization. It's like testing different delivery routes and mail carriers to see which one can reliably deliver the letter to the right mailbox. To add to the complexity, the delivery needs to be done safely and without causing any harm to the host organism. It's a delicate balancing act that requires meticulous planning and execution. So as you can see, the task of delivering gene editing to the right cells is no small feat. It's a complex problem that requires innovative solutions. But fear not, scientists are tirelessly working on it, relentlessly paving the way towards a future where gene editing can be efficiently and safely delivered to the right cells. The path to efficient delivery of gene editing is still under construction, but scientists are relentlessly paving the way. The second major challenge is the risk of off-target effects. Now, what exactly does this mean? In the context of gene editing, off-target effects refer to the unintentional alterations that can occur in parts of the genome separate from the region being intentionally targeted. So, why is this a problem? Imagine trying to fix a specific part of a car and accidentally causing damage to another section. Not ideal, right? That's what happens in off-target effects. The changes could be minor or they could have profound implications. The potential long-term complications for patients are significant, with one of the most alarming being the possibility of malignancy. In simpler terms, these unintentional edits to the genome could potentially lead to cancer. Yes, the very disease that we hope gene editing could help treat or prevent may be triggered by off-target effects. But it's not all doom and gloom. Scientists are working tirelessly to minimize these off-target effects. The concentration of the Cas9 nucleus enzyme, a key player in the CRISPR-Cas9 system, and the duration of its expression are both critical factors. By controlling these variables, we can limit off-target activity. Recent modifications to the nucleus enzyme have helped increase its specificity, 
meaning it's getting better at hitting its intended target. However, it's a little like trying to hit a bullseye with a dart while blindfolded. Even with the best intentions and the most careful preparations, you might not hit the mark every time. That's why further research is crucial. We need to continue refining the technology, improving its precision and accuracy. We need to better understand the potential risks and how to mitigate them. And most importantly, we need to establish the long-term safety of any treatment involving CRISPR-Cas9. While improvements have been made, more work is needed to ensure the precision of CRISPR-Cas9. Our understanding of gene editing and its potential is still in its infancy, but every step forward brings us closer to realizing its promise. Finally, we must address the ethical considerations surrounding CRISPR-Cas9. The technology's potential to alter the course of life as we know it is both exciting and daunting. Of particular concern is the application of CRISPR-Cas9 in gene editing of embryos, a topic that sparks heated debates among scientists, ethicists, and the general public alike. Imagine the ability to edit out genetic diseases before a baby is even born, to ensure they live a life free from certain hereditary afflictions. This is the promise of CRISPR-Cas9 technology when applied to human embryos. Yet this same promise is also its greatest controversy. Such a profound intervention into the very blueprint of life raises questions we've never had to consider before. The primary concern stems from the fact that changes made to an embryo's genes do not just affect the individual born from that embryo. They also affect their potential future offspring. This is what we call germline modification. The changes are permanent, passed down through generations. The long-term consequences of this are still unclear, and many argue we are not yet equipped to fully understand or manage them. Opponents of germline modification argue that we could unwittingly introduce new diseases or imbalances into the human gene pool. They also worry about the potential for non-therapeutic genetic enhancement, where gene editing is used not to prevent disease but to enhance certain traits. This could lead us down a path towards designer babies where the rich and powerful can choose the genetic traits of their children, deepening societal inequalities. On the other hand, proponents argue that if we have the technology to prevent suffering, it's our moral obligation to use it. They believe that with stringent regulations and oversight, we can navigate the ethical minefield. The debate is complex and multifaceted, reflecting the profound implications of CRISPR-Cas9 technology. It's clear that we need to establish firm ethical boundaries for its use. As we push forward with CRISPR-Cas9, it's crucial that we tread carefully, ensuring that we respect ethical boundaries and prioritize safety above all. So, where does this leave us with CRISPR-Cas9? The potential is immense, but the path is riddled with challenges. Delivering gene editing to the right cells remains a complex puzzle. Off-target effects capable of causing long-term complications need to be minimized. And the ethical implications of gene editing, particularly in embryos, are still murky at best. The journey to unlock the full potential of CRISPR-Cas9 is exciting, complex, and fraught with challenges. But if we can navigate these hurdles, the possibilities are truly limitless.